are you? What school do you go to? And what grade are you in? A Conversation with Global Professor, Episode 5. Thank you, Professor Barry, for giving me the opportunity. I'm Stefan Mustafa, I'm 11 years old and a fifth grader at the Moni Tutorial School. I live in Dhaka, Bangladesh. I'm the only son of my parents and I have an elder sister. My father is a business executive and my mother has devoted her full time to make our family wonderful. And my aim in life is to become a motivational public speaker, particularly targeting the youngsters to help building a beautiful world using their hidden talents. That's all. Thank you. Today, our guest is Safwan Mustafa. He is a Bangladeshi, 11 years old and a child prodigy. He's in the fifth grade at Dunmundi Tutorial School. He is the fastest kid typist in Bangladesh. Wow, that's honestly so great. So, um, first of all, uh, what make first of all, what makes you different from the 1,300 other kids in Dunmundi Tutorial? And second of all, what makes you different from the 18 million other primary school students in all of Bangladesh? Well, there are many talented kids in Bangladesh, and this is a country of opportunities. We just need to bring the right talents in the right places. I have very little achievements till today, and I'm continuously working to achieve more and more. This would not have happened if I wouldn't have got the support from my family. To name a few small achievements that I've obtained so far are as follows. I'm a painter and I've participated in six art exhibitions, one of which was glass painting. I got awarded in all art exhibitions. And Professor Barry, I have done a painting for you for this special live session. Thank so you. may I show it to you? Yeah, sure. Okay, so here's the painting. Can you see it? Thank you so much. It's so great. I love yeah. that hand. I can't even draw a face yes. that well. <laughs> okay, and as I talked about the glass painting, so let me show it to you. So here is, yes, here is the glass painting. You can see? This is the glass painting which I've done. My goodness, you are truly great. In fact, I've also interviewed another artist before. You are honestly one of the best artists I have ever seen. And now, I'm even more honored to interview you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. means a lot to me. Huh? So, um, is there anything you can do other than... Uh, now... How fast can you type exactly? Because typing was the whole reason I came to interview you here. Yeah, so uh, Professor Barry, actually, in the second question that how I'm different from the other kids, I just had to tell some more points that I'm also a brown belt in martial arts and presently having trainings for obtaining the black belts. This helps me to keep physically fit. And... Interestingly, I've developed a general knowledge video content course with 5,000 amazing general knowledge questions about the world and for all age groups. It is for all the age groups. Youngsters and job seekers can be highly benefited by going through the course. And I'm one of the youngest teachers in Bangladesh teaching mental math at Bangladesh Online School. I also have a YouTube channel, namely Little Master, where I upload videos on mental math, English pronunciation, Islamic lessons, and computer programming. I have more than 100 public presentations in my YouTube and Facebook channels. I'm a regular podcaster at TESOL Radio for motivational stories and Islamic lessons. And at last, I'm the fastest kid typist in Bangladesh, I'm only a few words away from becoming the world's fastest kid typist. Please wish me luck on the same. My goodness, you're pretty famous. Now, um, I see that you have all of these great achievements. Now, I wanted to ask you a little something. Um, what do you think about Bangladesh's current education system? Well, um... I would say that the present education system in Bangladesh is bad. It's still not up to the mark either. 
but it is improving. Pandemic has taught us and also teaches the new horizons of teaching methodologies. And the main problem here is that there are very few insignificant changes in the education system of Bangladesh for the last 50 years. And believe it or not, the way our great grandfather studied, we are also following the same methods. But the world has changed a lot. Our decision makers need to ask themselves that does this uh, curriculum really help our students to be fit for the coming world? And by 2050, it is predicted that there will be 9 billion people, I repeat, 9 billion people in this planet Earth. Food and pure drinking water will be a scarcity. After all, we will have to fill up 9 billion dishes three times a day. We need to think about that. Our education system should somehow be able to put the thinking process in our heads, which it currently doesn't. One of the most important drawbacks of our education system is it cannot come out of the traditional systems like traditional courses and traditional grades. All right. So now that's great. But I wanted to ask you what difference does one, uh, in fact, here in the U.S. as well, we also study the same way as our great-grandparents do. The current educational system was invented in 1874. So, um, right. now I wanted to ask you, what makes Don Monday tutorial in particular different from the rest of the schools in Bangladesh? Well, the only tutorial is such a school. Well, it was established in 1972 and it is a very old school and it has lots of experienced teachers like one for 30, 35 years, even for 40 years. Like I, my class teacher, Lulu Miss, yes, maybe she's watching the live probably with you as your very famous Professor Barry. So I've informed all my school teachers to watch this live and Every teacher is, well, they have different kinds of talents and, of course, they're very good at teaching as well. That's great. And um, I wanted to ask you, uh, which teacher do you like the most? Okay, so my most favorite teacher is Mohamed Yase, the founder chairman of Tissot Bangladesh Limited. He is smart, dynamic, and one of my idol. I've done many researches with him, and he helped me with my, with my English pronunciation and mental math. Together, we have also invented some creative mental mathematics tricks. He's not only a teacher, but also a preacher. Our chemistry is so beautiful, which is very unique in this country. Great. So now, um, are there any favorite subjects you have? Yes, my favorite subjects are mathematics and English, especially English pronunciation, because, you know, I believe that speaking is an art and it is important to have a good accent to communicate with the people globally. If you allow me, I can bring in some examples for our viewers, like I, we can learn something together. Well, if you give me the permission, Professor Barry? Um, if we have the time, then sure. I give you permission to go yes. ahead. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So, you know, we all want to be fluent in our English speaking. So I'm going to tell you such a tip so that you can be even more fluent in your English speaking. So we call this glottal stop. So when we drink water, you know, if we put these three fingers in the middle of our throat, now this organ, you see, this organ is called the glottis. Yes, this is called the glottis organ. And when you try to swallow something, you will uh, see that something is happening in the middle of your throat. And this is what glottal stop is. So question comes, where can you use the glottal stop? So if you find any consonant sounds after ta, ka, and da, then we can use the glossal stop. For example, uh, like, wow, uh, well, is not, uh, it's not my fault. So you see, it's not my fault. So after not, see, the last sound is tough sound. So my fault, 
Ma is a consonant sound. It is also known as a nasal sound. So, as we have a consonant sound after ta, if we have after uh, consonant sounds after ta kinda, we can use the global stop. Like we can use the watch, uh, stopwatch, even uh, that which one is faster. It is not my fault, or it's not my fault. Professor Barry, what do you think? Which one was faster? The first one or the second one? Um, the one with the shortening, the second one. It's not my fault. Yeah, it's not my fault. So you see, we can improve our uh, yes speaking ability. More, we can be more fluent. Let's take another example. He is a bad guy, or he's a good guy. Both of them are the same. So he is a bad guy. Now see. G is a consonant sound and we have bad. So da at the last and we have consonant sound after that. So now again, let's uh, take a stopwatch timer and let's take how much time you take with the first one. He is a bad guy or second one is a bad guy. So the second was obviously faster, right? It was faster than the first one. Yes. So thank you. That's all about the English pronunciation. All right, great. I love that lesson, and I love how you made it so compact. So um, now I heard that um, you are a uh, great in mental math. So I know you use uh, yes. many methods, um, including that one where you use a method to add twenty consecutive numbers. Uh, so first, can I hear yes. your method? Okay. So method uh, is basically first of all. Uh, well, for example, there are 20 consecutive numbers in the series. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. You will take huge time if you stop like this. 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10. So it's going to take a long time to solve it. But what we can do, we can just take the first digit of the series, uh, first number of the series and the last number of the series. So the first the first number of the series is 1 and the last number of the series is 20. So we need to add that together. So it can be 1 plus 20 which equals 21. And at last, the last step which you need to do is you need to add a 0 in the unit place. So the answer is 2, 1, 0. Hmm. That's a great method. And um, what we use here at Mary Science Lab, it's um, in fact, maybe we should go to another question. We'll come back to that later. So, first of all, yes. um, why do you think some kids don't show their extraordinary side? Why do you think some kids just um, don't do anything great for most of their life? What I understand is most of the children are into syllabus-centric learning, which is not right. Like, we cannot go beyond the syllabus. And point two is parents and seniors often leave the kids with a cell phone to engage them with games and unproductive words. This is one of the big obstacles for the success. And most of the children, yes, most of the children do not utilize their time properly. Time management is very important for success. Yes, the one who can manage time is the king and the one who can't is a loser. So. The urge of creating something new or inventing a process are not injected to them by the schools or from the family. Family members push them to do good results only, but they don't tease them to be creative or successful. Scoring high marks in exam doesn't really mean that you're successful. And lastly, what I would love to say is parents' thinking process also play a vital role here. Yes, true. Um, a lot of parents are leaving their kids with phones so they can play games. Um, they can be unproductive. They can uh, they can get themselves addicted in uh, on unproductive things. And to be fair, we do need to relax from time to time. But sometimes, um, getting too much of it, uh, getting it out of control, is uh, one of the worst things. So you can't have too much fun or too much work. And now. Um, um, let's, I wanted to ask you, what do you think will happen to the Bangladeshi education system or for, uh, to be fair, the entire education system in the world over the next decade or so? 
Oh, okay, that's a very good question. Now, first of all, it's very difficult to predict, and the simple answer is IDK. I don't know. But I can assume that the education system after a decade can be completely changed and might be full online-based education to facilitate the distance learning. Technology will take over today's human-based systems. AI, artificial intelligence supported learning will be there, and with artificial intelligence in place, the human works will be less. Big companies will get their job done with the use of AI and robots. So technical education will superset the general education. Also, with access to the information highways, uh, that is the high-speed internet, the syllabus for any course will not be limited in the available hard copy books in the market. That's what I think will happen after in the education system after a decade. Great. So now I'm not exactly sure about the AI part. But I definitely agree with that um on the, on, or that virtual part because um as even as COVID is fading away I, um a distance a distance learning is making its mark and so we still often every day see people learning via Zoom or Google Meet or Google Classroom or stuff like that instead of actually meeting face to face. So digital learning had definitely taken uh, it had definitely taken a scratch at the education system as a whole, and it's probably going to be the mainstream source of education in the foreseeable future. So now let's get back to that um, adding consecutive numbers thing. Now you talked about yes. adding a uh, number from one to twenty. Well, here in the early science lab, we actually use the equation n times n plus one over two. Now, over two. Yeah. yeah. Now n is pretty simple. N is just the greatest number in the sequence, or uh, the last number in the sequence. For example, if you were adding one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight plus nine plus ten, <sighs> then um n would be equal to ten. So you can take ten. And replace all uh, places where n is with 10. So you get 10 times 10 plus 1 divided by 2, which is 10 times 11 divided by 2. And 10 times 11 is obviously 110 over 2. 110? Mm -hmm. And divided by 2 will be 55. Great. All right. So now it looks like um that's all of the questions i have to offer you um but uh, one more thing before uh, you can start asking me questions um the guy who invented this method was actually named gas now it was a, yeah. it, it's a very weird story how he came to invent it um so legend says that when he was six in the 1800s um his teacher uh, had finished all of the activities the entire classroom had finished all of the activities, so the teacher decided to give them um, a really long activity that they would never finish, so that they just didn't walk out of class or something like that. And so she asked them to add all numbers from 1 to 100. And it is said that while the others took hours to even get halfway, Gauss did the whole entire thing within just five minutes by experimenting and that he found the answer to be 5,050. And indeed, if you go through yeah. the laborious process of um, taking that, then you will find that indeed it is 50-50. Yes, that's right. So, um, now you can start asking me questions. Um, it's so great to see you. Okay. You're definitely an inspiration for millions of children around the world. I hope that in the foreseeable future, uh, I hope that in the blink of an eye, you will change millions of kids' lives. I know that you uh, want to be a motivational speaker. In fact, you told us that at the beginning. So I hope that you will motivate the seven, uh, the eight billion, and soon to be nine billion kids around the entire world. Yes, now Professor Isaac Barry, you're also a great inspiration for me. I follow your Facebook and YouTube pages every day and I also admire you very much. And I'm a big fan of yours. Yes, Thanks. me and my family members, everyone is a big fan of yours. 
Oh, that means so much to me. Yes, and uh, just to remind you, you asked me a question that how fast can you type? Is fast typing important? That eh? right? Yep. So I didn't answer that question. So the answer to that question is I just tested my typing speed yesterday, and that was seventy words, uh, one hundred and seven words per minute with ninety eight percent accuracy. Not bad actually. Not not bad. So at present, the fastest kid type in the world is Abhishek Jain, a 13-year-old kid, and he posted 109 words per minute. I'm very close to do the world record, just three more words per minute I just need. If I can hit 110, I can be the fastest kid type in the world. Yes, and as far as my knowledge goes, Faster typing is very important because, you know, we are moving towards a greener paperless world. The future institutions are predicted to be paperless and hence computer communication will take over. It is taking over, actually. Here comes the importance of fast typing. The faster you can type, the more time you can save for other important works. Wow. Well, that's very true because... Um, basically, electronics have already taken over. Um, the only way we use letters is basically either ceremonial or for very, very important stuff. Like, I don't know, sending a letter to the president. Um, even for, yeah. uh, even for somewhat formal things, like communicating with your professor, um, you, we always use emails. And so we don't really use paper anymore. And um, so see, uh, using email, uh, uh, using typing is one of the biggest things. And even if we do use paper, you're usually typing out those letters. So I can, now I can finally see um, the importance of fast typing. And also, um, I'm not really sure what you mean by not bad for 107 words per minute. That's great. I'm 40 words per <laughs> minute behind that. Yes, and you know, Professor Isaac Barry, you're great. Well, what's your typing speed, by the way? Um, usually I get around sixty words per minute. The a record I oh, have. That's great. Yeah, the record I have is somewhere around seventy. So. Okay, that's great. No problem. Like, if you have anything to type, you can just send it to me. I will type it for you. You can just do other important words. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, shall I start asking you questions? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, first question then, who is your idol? Um, well, I would say that it would be either Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. They were both great physicists who changed the world of physics and revolutionized physics. Um, Sir Isaac Newton was the person who discovered gravity. Some people even made jokes about him inventing gravity. So yeah. in 1500, everybody was floating in the sky. And um, he discovered gravity. He, um, dis- he worked on optics and light. He changed the world of physics as we know it. And Einstein changed it even more by toppling Sir Isaac Newton's view of physics and creating a completely, uh, what is now the base of all of modern physics. Right. So th- those two are my idols because they completely change physics and I look up to them. Okay, understood. Now next question comes that how did you get your name Isaac? Like is it from Isaac Newton inspired from him? Well, um, yeah, it is. Um, when, uh, my birth name was actually Saborno Patik Berry. Saborno meaning uh, beautiful, Berry meaning gold, and I'm still not sure to this day what Patik means. Um, but when yeah. I was two, my um, a friend of my father, who is a professor, Professor Mafuzur Rahman, he actually he actually asked me. Um, he actually asked my father. I just relearned all of calculus from this guy. In fact, he had went to a very prestigious school, but from that school he didn't understand most of calculus, and he had learned it from some random two-year-old boy on the internet. And so he saw, he likened me to Sir Isaac Newton, who is the inventor of calculus, and he thought this man is the next, this little boy is the next Sir Isaac Newton. So he asked my father to rename me, um, uh, uh, to change my middle name to Isaac. 
And um, ever since the age of two, that was my new name. Okay, uh, do you know the meaning of Isaac? Um, well, I believe it comes from Sir Isaac Newton, and I'm not sure what significance it has there, but I'm sure it's um, very common, because I've seen like a million British people with that name. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And now comes a funny question. That, for the weavers, just for entertainment, do you cry when you get sad or angry? Um, well, sometimes when I'm hearing emotional stories or things about hardship, um, I cry a little bit. I get sad, but, um, I've not, I haven't gotten angry. I haven't gotten angry for most of my life. I mean, so that means, so, I mean, aside from, like, terrorist attacks or hearing about, um, terrorism or hearing about, uh, starving people or hearing about hardship, I mean, this world is not perfect. And sometimes it just saddens me to hear that. And sometimes I even cry about it. But I have almost never gotten angry, so. Very good, very good. And just, uh, this is my idea, and... Do you have any plan of opening Isaac Barry Foundation like Gates Foundation or Bill Gates? Well, good idea, but I think that I don't want to establish something about philanthropy, but rather something that would educate people about mathematics and science. And something that would, well, educate the world about uh, math, science, and how they can be used to uh, change our world, change our technology, and um, how we can stop markers from drying out so I don't get outraged every time I try to pick a new one. Oh, wow, very good. And my next question to you is that when can I expect you to visit Bangladesh and meet you in person? Well, I'm not sure right now. Um, I don't have any plans right now, but maybe I'll have one in the future. Okay, great. Well, I want to meet you in person. I'm very eager to... Yes, I'm waiting eagerly. And do you have any idea that how will the world look like after 20 years from now with AI in place? Well, I'm not sure if even the baby fitted to our time, which still is only, well, I don't know. Uh, if you're talking about quantum, uh, if you're talking about special relativity, then um, our, our physics is only about 70 years old. And if we're talking about quantum mechanics, then it's only about, I don't know, maybe um, 50 years old. So our, uh, our physics is approximately the same age as my grandfather. And so our physics is, the amount of physics or the foundation of physics that we have today is very young. And so I don't think we can use it to achieve something like consciousness or AI. But if well, some guy, um, if some guy from the future invented a time machine and shoved an AI robot in there, then um, AI would probably change the entire world if it was suddenly spontaneously brought here. Um, it would probably revolutionize tasks, the short tasks, or like laborious tasks, like I don't know. Um, um, cleaning or uh, cleaning or checkout or cashiering or organizing and it would probably change it would probably um the amount of jobs would probably suddenly plummet because of AI taking up like I don't know half our jobs and lastly I would love I would like to work very closely with you and perhaps with your team to do something special so that we can be remembered for our good deeds to the generations to come and also keep Bangladeshi flag flying high. So maybe we can meet in another interview session. Yes, we can meet in another interview session. Maybe that time I can interview you and later you interview me. Just reverse the role. Great. So, um, you are already truly
truly an amazing motivational speaker. I can see you becoming a great person in your future, and you are honestly one of the best people I have ever seen. I've interviewed a lot of incredible people, uh, and a lot of incredible people, some of which are somewhat close to your age. Well, um, like a person I interviewed who was, I think, 10, or one person who was 13. But you are truly one of the most incredible and remarkable and extraordinary people that I have ever interviewed. <laughs> I would like to thank you for being yeah. here with me. No, I should thank you for giving me such an opportunity. I would love to work with you. Maybe another interview session in the next month. Well, we can make a plan that maybe once a month we too can go live for the viewers only once a month we can just fix a day and every I, month the viewers will play yeah and i would also like to thank you immensely for taking uh, so much time out of your day i think it's currently around somewhere or around midnight um and being the desk so i would like to thank you <laughs> for taking this time no professor barry it's not midnight yet it's, uh, you know, the time difference between USA and Bangladesh is 11 hours. Yes, 11 right. hours in some cases. So it is 11.07 here. 11.07 right. here. And it's morning there, right? In the USA? Mm -hmm. So thank yes. you for taking out uh, uh, this time of your day. So I would like to uh, meet you in the future. You are such a remarkable person. Yeah. And I would like to say thank you. Bye. A Global Professor Show. Hosted by Saborno Isaac, will showcase your child's achievement to the world. If you want to see your child in the show, please send your child's resume and two minutes of video footage in English to rb3408 at nyu.edu. Brought to you by Brilliant.org. Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science.